In this brief tutorial, I will give you a brief introduction about somatosensory work potentials. So let's get started here. Median somatosensory work potential is recorded by stimulating at the wrist and recording from the cervical spine, brachial plexus and the cortex. In this tutorial, I'm not going to go into a lots of details. What I'm trying to do here is at least introduce you to the different waveforms. So the first waveform that you see here, this is called the ERPS potential. So this here is called the ERPS potential. ERPS potential is generated by the brachial plexus. So if you stimulated the median nerve and record the ERPS potential, at least you know that the stimulus has traveled between the median nerve at the wrist and the brachial plexus. The next waveform that you see here, this waveform right here, this is on the left side and this is on the right side, is what is called N13. It is called N13 because there is a negative potential that is recorded at 13 milliseconds. N13 is generated either by the dorsal root entry zone or the cervicomedullary junction. There is some debate about that. But when you see an N13, it means that the median, the stimulus from the median nerve has traveled all the way to the cervicomedullary junction. The next waveforms on the left side, it is not very well reproduced. But here it looks a little bit better here. This is what is called P14 and this is called N18. P14 is generated by the medial lemniscus and N18 is generated by the thalamus or the subcortical structures. The next wave that you see, this is called N20. This wave is called N20. This is the left side. This is the right side. This is generated from the cortex. So if you've stimulated the median nerve at the wrist and you've seen an N20, it means that the stimulus, it, it means that the impulse has traveled all the way to the cortex. M median somatosensory work potentials are frequently used for prognostication after anoxic brain injury. Absence of N20 responses typically means a poor prognosis for functional recovery. But presence of N20 does not automatically mean that the patient will have a good recovery. So it is the absence of the N20 that has some value. Presence of N20 does not automatically give you a good prognosis. It is important to realize that the somatosensory evoke potentials have to be done by a trained technologist and should be interpreted by a trained physician or neurophysiologist. You have to make certain that the filter settings are properly set. So in this case, we had a high frequency filter at 3000 Hertz and low frequency filter at 30 Hertz. We had a repetition rate of 4.44 and we averaged about 1000 stimuli or 980 stimuli for, other, uh, for the second wave. The other thing to be uh, to be careful is the right montage has to be used. If you don't use the right montage, for instance, when you're recording a cortical response, you have to use the reference on the cot on the contralateral cortical area. If somebody had used an ERPS potential, which you could have recorded an N18, and which would appear as uh, an N20 response. Well, that's a brief introduction to somato somatosensory work potentials. So I hope the next time you come across it, you're able to at least say that the waves of interest are the ERPS potential generated by the brachial plexus, the N13 that's generated by the cervicomedullary junction, P14 generated by the medial lemniscus, N18 generated by the thalamus, or other subcortical areas, and N20, which is generated by the cortex. Thank you so much. Thank you for your attention.